talking about today is solving compound inequalities. So remember, compound inequalities are ones that are ors or ands. So they might have the word or or and in them, or it might be a compound that has three parts, like five is less than x is less than seven. That's an and, but we just don't write the word and. Okay, so in order to get started with this, I just want to make sure we're clear on what they were. Um, and now we're going to learn how to spell them and graph them and put it all together. So here's a couple applications of where you might use an and. So if you are an investor and you're, um, you're purchasing stock, sometimes your value of your stock can go way up, right? And you might want to sell that so that you can make the profit. And sometimes if you have stock, the value could go way down. Things could lose money. And at some point, you want to just cut your losses and not um, have that stock anymore and at least recover maybe a little bit of it. So if you're an investor and you're going to say, hey, if the change in value is less than $3, so if that price goes down more than $3, like less than, the price is going down lower than that, or if it is greater than $4.50, then you're going to sell it, right? Because you can make all that money. So on a number line, if I have, hey, um, this is my prices, or these are my changes. If the price is less than this, going this way, the price goes way down. Over here, this means I'm going to sell it. Or if it gets bigger than this, this means I'm going to sell it, sell that stock. And if the price is here, this is the range you can keep it. So I've heard of some investors that actually are looking at inequalities to compare, to figure out, hey, I'm looking at the changes that take place every day. And when they get out here, they sell them. And if it's right in here going back and forth a little bit, it's okay, they keep it. Okay, now let's talk about a life example of an or. So when you are getting your driver's license, it's gonna be happening soon for you guys, um, you can go on specific highways a minimum of 40 and a maximum of 60, right? So there is a minimum. You can actually go too slow. So I know you have to go between 40 and 60. So we know you have to go greater than 40, but can you actually go 40? You can, so it's greater than or equal to. And you also have to go less than 60. But are you allowed to go exactly 60? You are, so it's equal to, okay? So this is gonna be the smaller number on the left, the bigger number on the right, the X in the middle, and then I've got the inequalities coming through here. So it is the X is greater than the 40, the 40 is less than, and the 60 is less than or equal to the X. So if I'm graphing this, the speed limit you're allowed to go, so if you are going 40, it's okay. If you're going 60, it's okay. And any of those speeds in the middle, this is good. This is the safe zone. Over here is danger zone. Okay, now we have some life examples of why we would need to solve this, right? Now let's talk about how to actually solve this. So I can rewrite this as two inequalities. We talked about writing it like that. Six is less than x plus five. And x plus 5 is less than 14. But when it's a compound inequality like this, what you want to do is you want to get x in the middle, right? And I just want you to recognize there are three parts. So kind of like when we did an equation, how there were two parts, and you did whatever you were doing to both sides, now you're just going to do it to all three parts. So you're trying to get x alone. When it gets confusing, I would say just cover up this part of it and look at it like it's two parts. What would I do to get rid of a plus 5? You would subtract it. So just do minus 5, but you're doing it to all three parts because there's three sections to this. And then 6 minus 5 is 1. This is just x, and this is 9, right? 14 minus 5. And the x is in the middle. If I'm graphing it like this and x is in the middle, then it is between the one and the nine. It does not include the one that is an open circle. And that, because it's got the equal sign, that is a closed circle. It is the nine and all the stuff in the middle. Not the one, but everything in the middle. Okay, if I'm solving a four, 
all I do is I solve each problem. I, I'm going to call them baby problems because I've got two things to do. Solve each baby problem. So what would I do for this? Get the thing alone, get the x alone, so get rid of the 9 that's on the same side as it. 2x is less than or equal to negative 24. Get the x alone. Don't stop till x is all the way alone. Divide by 2. And I've got x is less than negative 12. Now i got to do the other one. Don't put it on the number line until you have both because you don't know what numbers you need. I want to get x alone. That negative 4 is touching the x, so it's multiplied. So divide both sides by negative 4. And you've got x is greater than 6. Now hold on. Make sure we realize there, I had to flip that. Why did I flip the inequality? Because I divided by a negative. So my answer is x is bigger than 6 or x is less than or equal to negative 12. The order that I write those doesn't matter, but the order that I put it in on a number line does matter. This is negative 12 and this is 6 because that's the smaller number has to go on the left. And it is less than or equal to going this way or greater than going this way. Okay, here's more practice with an or. Again, we're just going to solve each baby equation. So I want to get the x alone. So work with what's closest to the furthest away from the x, not closest to. I have 5x is greater than 20. 5 is multiplied, so you divide that. So my first one is x is greater than 4. Now I have to solve this. Now remember with inequalities, it's so much easier if the variable's on the left. The flipping at the end gets kind of confusing. So sometimes I'm like, well, I'm just going to move the 4x over, even though it's going to give me a negative. I'm going to show you this both ways. That's negative 1x plus 5 is greater than 9. Then I move the 5 over. I've got negative 1x is greater than 4. Then I divide both sides by negative 1. And I have x and I have negative 4. But remember, I have to switch the direction of the inequality because I, I divided by a negative. So I have to flip it here. And instead of a greater than, it's a less than. So here's my answer. x is greater than 4 and less than negative 4. You've got to put the smaller number on the left, the bigger number on the right. It's greater than 4. Open circle, because it doesn't have an equal sign. Open circle, because it doesn't have an equal sign, and it's going to the left. Now, before we move on, let's have a conversation, because I moved the 4x over, but you might have said, hey, um, I don't like dealing with negatives, so I'm going to move the 3x over. So then I would have 5 is greater than x plus 9. Then I would move the 9 over, and I would have negative 4 is greater than x. But I want to write that to be able to figure out how to shade. If negative 4 is bigger than x, that means x is smaller than negative 4. So I got the same answer, but I had to flip it at the end to understand it. When I rearrange the negative 4 and the x, it makes me rearrange um, the inequality. Okay, let's look at this next one. I'm trying to get x alone in the middle. That's my goal. Um, I want x alone in the middle. So if you get stuck, cover this up. What would I do if it was just 2x is less than 18? I would divide by 2. So again, remember, there are three parts here. All you're doing is whatever you do to 1, you do to all three. 10 divided by 2 is 5. That's x, and that's 9. It's somewhere between 5 and 9. Open circles. In just the stuff in the middle because it's the x is in the middle and I don't have it including the 5 or the 9. If I wanted to graph this as x is greater than 5, it'd be going that way. And x is less than 9, it's going that way. Where are they overlapped? The place in the middle. Okay, here's a little bit harder problem. Again, recognize there are three parts here. All I want to do is get x alone. I want x alone in the middle, in the middle section. So I'm going to cover this up. Hey, what would I do? I would subtract 2. 
So do the same thing. You've got three parts. Six is less than 3x is less than 12. Trying to get x alone. Divide all the parts by 3. 2 is less than x is less than 4. So it's just between the 2 and the 4. There's the 2, there's the 4. Those are both open circles. Because these are less than symbols, it's just the x in the middle. It goes in the number line just like that. Okay, now I hope that you are ready and able to solve compound inequalities. Remember, if it's an and written like this, get the x alone in the middle. If it's an or, just do the two baby problems. 